Hey everyone, I hope you're all staying happy and well, and welcome to the channel. In today's video, we'll be going over how to create your own YouTube comments spam classifier using Python, scikit-learn, and a public data set of YouTube spam and non-spam comments. So hopefully you'll find this video interesting, and of course, if you do and you want to see more machine learning related videos, please do consider hitting that like and subscribe button down below, as it really helps out the channel an incredible amount. Now let's kick it off by going over the data set. So the data set we'll be working with today is actually found under the UCI ML repository set of data sets. And they actually have a specific data set for YouTube spam collection. And it basically, it's a collection of uh, five smaller data sets um, composing a total of around 2,000 t uh, real messages or comments in this case uh, that were taken from five videos. And those five videos were among the 10 top uh, most viewed in that period of which it was collected. And as you can see here, um, this these five videos are actually each from um, a musical artist um, that was pretty popular at the time. Um, so we do have um, spam and ham um, comments, and they're roughly equivalent in terms of how many they are, there are of each category. Um, so that'll be really helpful. And so, yeah, this data set is actually um, pretty well tuned already. Um, so we'll be working with this today. Now, just a quick disclaimer, uh, we won't be going in depth on machine learning or natural language processing theory, as this is definitely more application based. But if you want to learn more about those concepts that we're going to cover in this video, I'll drop links down in the description below. Anyway, so you may have noticed at the start of the video, we're actually going to be using a cloud based runtime that is freely provided by uh, Google and is a partnership with Google Drive. Um, and it's actually called Google Colab. Um, and if you haven't heard of it, basically it allows us to um, run Jupyter Notebooks on, on the cloud um, for free. And it links perfectly into your um, Google Drive. Um, so it's really handy and convenient. So we're gonna be using that today. But nonetheless, let's jump right into writing some code. So the first thing we wanna do is actually import all the necessary modules. Um, the first of which is gonna be Pandas, and this is essentially a data manipulation library. Um, so we're gonna import that. We also need zip file, which is gonna allow us to unzip the data set. And we also need pickle, um, because we're gonna be exporting this module at the end as a pickle file, so we'll import it now. And the next set of modules that we need um, are from scikit-learn, and this is gonna be, um, these ones are gonna be for data processing. Um, so the first of which is gonna be from scikit-learn's model selection uh, library, um, and it's gonna be train test split, and this is gonna allow us to um, split our training and test sets. Um, we also need um, our vectorization technique. Um, we're gonna be, this is gonna be under feature extraction, um, if I can type uh, in text, and we're gonna be importing the um, TF-IDF vectorizer. And we'll go over what that actually is in a bit later. And the next thing that we need is also from scikit-learn, and this is gonna be um, the actual model itself, um, or the algorithm that, that trains the model, and it's gonna be naive Bayes in this case. Um, more specifically, we're gonna be using um, multinomial naive Bayes, and we're, go, we're gonna go over in a second why we're choosing this um, algorithm. So we're just gonna import it right now, multinomial naive Bayes. And the last thing that we need from scikit-learn is just gonna be some met, um, some functions from the metrics module, um, which will allow us to analyze the performance of our model once we have trained it. Um, so we're gonna import things like the confusion matrix as well as classification report. Now for the sake of this video, I've actually already uploaded the zip file of the data set into um, my Google Drive at the root directory. So um, because we're gonna be using it from there, we actually need to um, imp uh, mount our Google Colab um, environment onto Google Drive. And there is a library that we have to import to do that. So we're gonna use a separate cell. Um, I'm just gonna be um, from google.colab um, and we're gonna import the drive module and we're gonna call their mount function. Sorry, um, excuse my typing here. Um, and the root directory, the, or sorry, the directory that we want to mount onto is going to be um, content slash drive. And so we just hit enter there. Um, I've already mounted it, so it's just going to say drive has already been mounted. Now, finally, we can actually start um, importing the data set itself and um, basically combining all the different um, CSV files that are within it. So the first thing I want to do is, of course, um, unzip the zip file. So we're going to call our zip file module, and we're going to call um, the zip file function as well. And so, of course, this is going to be under the content um, drive directory. And we're going to, because this is just under my my drive, um, like the root folder, um, we're going to uh, reference it as my drive as such. 
And the data set um, is titled uh, YouTube-spam-collection-v1.zip. And if you take a look at the data set at this point, you'll notice that it actually comes in five different CSV files. Um, so we're going to actually need to um, read all those CSV files in independently, and then we're going to try to uh, combine them all together into one data frame, one Pandas data frame. Um, so because this is kind of redundant and tedious, I've actually pre-written this out, so I'm just going to paste it here. Um, but just to quickly go over it, um, we have one CSV file for each musical artist, or basically for one of the each each of the videos. Um, and so we're going to open it from uh, read it from um, the zip file that we have uh, referenced here, and then we're going to use pandas uh, read CSV function, on, and we're going to go ahead and read this um, and parse it as a CSV file. Um, so after that is done, we can actually begin to combine this into one central data frame. And to do that, we can do pandas. Um, we can call pandas as con concat function, and we're just going to pass um, all um, all these variables in an array. Um, and we're just going to type that out. Awesome. And one bit of pre-processing that we can actually do right now is actually remove any columns that we don't need, um, just so that we can shrink the size of our data set. Um, so we can go ahead and call uh, the drop function and just pass an array of all the comments, uh, sorry, all the columns that we don't need. And this includes the common ID. Um, we also don't need the date and we also don't need the author. So mainly um, in this project, we'll just be working with the content of the data set, of the comment itself, as well as the class label. And so we're gonna do this on Access one, and we're going to do this in place as well. Now that our data set is finally formatted correctly, we can actually go ahead and split it into the training and test set. So this is where we're going to call the train test split function. And this is going to take in um, as the first parameter, it's going to take in um, the actual um, content, which is going to be um, the comments themselves. And then as for the second argument, we're going to pass in um, the class column, which is essentially the labels. Um, the class labels and this function will pass out our, or sorry this function will return a tuple of four values namely it's going to be it return our x train so our training set values first and then it's going to return our um, test set and then it's also going to return our um, training labels and last but not least our test labels as well and so by default this is going to perform a 75 percent training set and 25 percent test set um, split by default and so we're just going to go with that uh, because that'll work for us for now and now that our data set is split into the training and test sets, we can actually begin tokenizing the comments in the training set and applying the TFIDF vectorizer on the training set. And if you're unsure what TFIDF actually is, it's basically standing for um, term frequency and inverse document frequency. And this is a text vectorization technique that basically computes a measure that tells us how relevant or important a word is relative to the rest of the text, or in this case, the rest of the comment. And so this is a really popular technique for text vectorization, um, which is why we'll be using it in our scenario today. So because we've actually already imported it, um, we can just go ahead and uh, create a new cell and initialize it by calling the constructor. And I'm just going to store the, output, the vectorizer under a variable called tfidea vect, and um, we'll call the constructor. And we're going to pass in uh, or set two of the settings. Um, these are actually, by default, already set to true, but I'm going to set, um, explicitly set them true here, um, just so for the sake of um, making note of it. Um, and the next thing we want to do is actually call the fit and transform function. And this is going to be um, stored under a new variable called xtrain tfidf. And we're going to actually call it from the vectorizer itself. And of course, this is going to be the fit and transform function. So basically, this is going to apply the vectorizer um, onto our training set um, and return the output. And so, of course, we can also take a look at the um, the shape of this output um, just for good measure. Oops, sorry, I've got to run this cell. Um, okay, awesome. Yeah, so that's the shape. So as you can see here, it's going to be different from the original shape of the data set because now um, all the text has been vectorized, essentially computed to numerical values so that the machine um, can understand it. And now that we've actually gotten our, all our data processing steps out of the way, we can actually get into the exciting part of actually training the model. So we're going to go ahead and create a new variable called model. We're just going to store our model, and um, we're going to call the multinomial naive base constructor, and we're going to use all the default hyperparameters and settings. So we're not going to pass anything in. And for the training part, we're just going to call um, model.fit, and we're going to pass in the xtrain tfidf version, and we're just going to pass in the regular um, training labels as well. 
And so if we run the cell, this is just going to quickly train the model because the data set is not too big. Um, and Naive Bayes um, trains really quickly and also runs predictions in real time relatively quickly compared to other models. Um, it didn't take very long here, which is awesome. So now we can actually move on to generating predictions um, using the test set that we have. And then we can actually begin um, evaluating some of the performance metrics on, on our predictions. Um, so to generate the predictions, uh, we actually have to apply um, the same sort of vectorization technique to our um, test set as well. So we're going to go ahead and create a new variable for that called x test um, tfidf, and we're going to call the um, we're going to reference the tfidf vectorizer that we have constructed earlier. And just to, just a quick note um, of something we should be careful here. Um, instead of calling fit transform here, um, because we're using the test set here, we only need to call transform because we don't we do not need to fit um, the vectorizer on the data at this point. Um, so we're just going to call transform here, and we're going to pass in x test. And um, last but not least, we also need to um, have a variable to store, oops, sorry, I can't type here. Uh, we need to have a variable to store the predictions. So we're just going to call model.predict, and we're going to call this on um, the TFIDF version of our test set. And if we run this, um, this should generate a set of predictions for us. It should just be a, a giant array of um, integers, um, as you can see here giant array of integers. Um, and basically, it's saying um, all the zeros are saying it's um, non-spam or ham, and all the ones are um, spam. And so we're just going to run the cell again um, to clear the output there. OK, awesome. And so the next step we can actually do is generate the model performance metrics. Um, so we can go ahead and start by uh, generating a confusion matrix. And the first parameter we're going to take is going to be our test labels. Um, Sorry, our true class labels, and then the second parameter is going to be our actual predictions or predicted labels. And so if we uh, generate that, as you can see here, um, the majority of the values are correctly predicted, which is a good sign. And if we actually want to see a percentage uh, or accuracy percentage, or we can use the F score in this case, um, we can use the um, classification report um, function that we have imported earlier. And again, we're going to pass in the Y test as our true labels and predictions as the second argument, which is our predicted labels. And we can see that we obtained a nicely formatted table here um, with the F score telling us that we have an accuracy of roughly 93%, which is not bad. It's actually, yeah, it's not bad for the, the amount of effort that we put into this model. As you can see, we didn't do too much data processing or um, optimizations um, in terms of like um, handling our data set and um, optimizing it. Um, so 93% is definitely not bad um, for the sake of this video. And um, you can also um, call the score function on the model to get um, another um, to another validation of the accuracy. And so we can do this by passing in the TFIDF version of the test set and also our test labels as well. And as you can see here, um, it's roughly 93% as well. And of course, um, we can also um, perform cross-validation to further validate our model across different validation sets. Um, but for the sake of keeping this video short, we don't really need that for now. And because in a future video, we'll actually be deploying this model so that we can generate real-time predictions on a real case, uh, real use case application, um, we actually need to export this model first. And so we can do that by uh, using the pickle module that we have imported earlier. And so we're going to open a new file um, to export it. And we're just going to call it uh, model.pickle. And it's going to take, it's going to be writing a binary. And yeah, so we're just going to quickly export this, um, calling pickle.dump. And we're going to export the model and into model file. Awesome. And so one other thing that we actually need to export as well is the TFIDF vectorizer that we have trained uh, and fitted earlier on our training set. Um, so it's going to come in two files in total, the model file, um, model.pickle file, and our uh, TFIDF vectorizer file. So it's going to follow a similar format. I'm just going to call this TFIDF-vec.pickle and um, writing in binary as again. Um, and just naming the variables here and calling pickle dump again, um, vectorizer. And awesome. So if we just run this, um, it should successfully save. Um, yes, OK, yeah, it correctly saves both of our files um, into our root directory of our project, um, which is awesome. And so now we can actually use this for future applications. And that pretty much wraps up our classifier. But before we end, I just want to quickly go over some key limitations of this model and the project in general. Um, so basically, this model is trained on a data set only from music videos, specifically five music videos. So it probably isn't really wise to use this model for comments in, say, like a tech-related video, as a set of comments are generally going to be different in context. 
And of course, when we're training spam classifiers in general, it really begs the question of what is really considered spam and non-spam. Um, a comment considered spam in one context might just as well be considered non-spam in a different context. So if you're using a model like this one, it's probably best to use some human validation um, of the predictions as well. But nonetheless, in a future video, we'll still be deploying this so that we can make real-time predictions through an API. But for now, if you learned something or found this video helpful, please do consider hitting the like and subscribe button down below as it really helps out the channel. And as always, I hope you're all staying happy and well out there. But for now, take care.